this is what I like to call a soft opening, Scott. This is this is where you you're already having a chat as the music fades in. Oh, I see. I know. Right, okay. Yeah, welcome. This is this is where you're just having a chat, and I'm going, "How are you?" And we're just like, "Oh, incidentally, hello. How how are you all today?" Oh, I see. Right. Okay. So, so I mean, what would you like to chat about? Well, this is. Well, I think the, the, the soft opening. This is very meta. The soft opening is the chat about the chat. So. In the meantime, <laughs> welcome everybody back to the Gaming Blender and our wonderful soft opening. I'm Matt and I'm here with Scott. Hello, Scott. Hello. Beam um, me up. Well, that, that, that would be Scotty. Yes, but that's what our old um, classics teacher used to call you, so I'm going with it. Yeah, she did, didn't she? That was a bit weird. She did, yes. <laughs> it's a little pause. Is there a Scotty in the class? Uh, no, 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 there's a there's Scott. There's a Scott. How dare you? There's a Scott, miss. I've never been called Scotty. <laughs> Please don't call me Scotty. Never call me. It's a me. bit weird. <laughs> anyway, welcome to new and old listeners alike to the Gaming Blender, the hypothetical podcast, uh, gaming podcast, hypothetical podcast gaming, I was about to say. I was getting my words all in a muddle there. <laughs> it's a Sunday afternoon, we're recording, I've had a coffee. Uh, mm. The hypothetical gaming podcast where we create brand new games concocted by bl- blending together randomised genres and mechanics and we create something wonderful at the end of it. So Scott, how has your gaming week been? Back to the traditional questions. So I've, I've actually gotten very deep into, an, into a, uh, a game I think that released relatively recently called War Tales. I've seen you playing this and I have yes. no idea what it is, so please so, educate me. So it, 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 it's a game where you, um, it's a bit like another game that I've never played but I've been watching called Battle Brothers, okay, and it's it's set in a um, set in a sort of a, a, a fantasy sort of medieval universe and you play as a group of mercenaries um that are all just like they're, they're randomly generated characters and um you 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 move around you move around the map you you choose what sort of contracts you want to do and and you have to feed them and you have to keep them happy um and it's sort of, it's sort of done at the battles are sort of done on like a on like a hex grid type um you know small sort of um battlefield and uh, and and it is absolutely excellent i've i've gotten really 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 into it it's quite hard as well because you can quite easily sort of, oh, I'm going to go for a wander in the woods. Oh, good God, 10,000 boars are attacking me. Um, and, and it's a, and you, Just another and then, Sunday. Oh, and then, ah, you're all dead. Um, so it's, it, it's, it's, it, you can make it easier, but it is, I would say, quite um, roguish or ro- ro- roguelite-ish, I, I would say. Yeah. Um, uh, but I've, I've been I've been enjoying it massively, and also and also Matthew, you'll be pleased to know they're doing a co-op uh, part soon. Am, so, I, am I coming um, in? Yes, you may have to. Um, it's very fun. It's very fun. Um, but yeah, yes. What, what about yourself? So I, I've been jumping around various various genres. I've been doing a bit of real time strategy. I've been doing a bit of um, bit of manager. I got back into Transport Fever, which is a phenomenally hard transport management game. Which um, to I, I love stuff like that. But I get to a stage where I start playing it, and then I, I sort of go. The game goes, "You're doing it all wrong," and I go, "Okay, I'll turn it off then." Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I, I love the idea. When I was a kid, I, I built like this massive train network thing um, for miles and uh, miles and miles and miles across the UK. And I remember being completely addicted to it and just, just spending hours and hours of my life whiling away. And I've never quite been as good as my 12-year-old counterpart at, um, <laughs> at managing mm. transports. Well, I suppose we better crack on with making a game then, Scott. Mm, I think so. I think so. That's enough preamble, enough soft openings for one day. Anyway, so we're going to jump into the thing and here, as you hear my finger click as I go onto the right system on my computer, and we open up the wonderful spreadsheet where you will pick a genre. So Scott has one to 15 of video game genres to pick from, and he's going to pick one. I'm going to pick today number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Do you want to know what it is? Or do you Always. want to go to the mechanics? Always. Always. Always want to know what it is. So number nine is the generic, the most generic genre known to man. It is the action-adventure genre, which you can pretty much put anything that Sony makes nowadays into that section. Yes. I mean, to be, there are lots of very, very good action-adventure games. There are also yes. a lot of very, very bad ones. Oh, yes, yes. It's just, um, it's just the net is... It's not even just saying it's a broad net. If you were a fisherman, the net would cover the Atlantic Ocean. So let's make a very, very bad one. Uh, let's, let's crack on. <laughs> so should we find out what genre you want to be adding to this? So he has one to 29 to pick from, folks, and he has two to pick. Didn't I just do genre? Game mechanics, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I was confused. Like, genres within genres, good God. Um, 
Okay, what are the numbers again? I One to 29. Number. Every time. Every time. Every um, time. Okay, I'm going to go for number... I'm going to go for numbers four and seven. Okay. You pick four... Yes, okay. So you picked four mm. a while ago, uh, about three ago. Okay. Um, number four is a career mode, which I believe we did last did a couple episodes ago for Jurassic World Hunters. Yes. Um, which we had to create. Number seven, I like, and I always like this one because it means you've got you have to move away. So stealth. Ooh. I like a good stealth. Ooh, like a Metal Gear Solid. Ooh, that Ooh. is pretty much okay. Well, that's done. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've done the game. We've done the game, but it doesn't have a career mode. How do you add a career mode into a stealth mm, uh... action adventure game? Because a career implies making money. And now, what I would like to do, Scott, is I'm going to put my put my. Uh, I'm going to stop you from doing certain things. Go I don't want to make it like an assassin game. That is the most obvious career action yes. adventure. We're yeah. not about that. We're not about doing the straight up games. We want to do something weird. We want to do something out there. Happy with that. Um, I mean, being an assassin is pretty out there. Um, yes, but every game games love no, 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 assassins. No, no, you're right. You're right. Um, there are far too many assassins in. Uh, <laughs> there are far too game. many assassins in the world. Yes, I was about to say that, and I thought, mm, although that may be the case, I'm more thinking about the gaming world. Um, so, what kind of career requires stealth? Mm. And obviously, it doesn't have to be natural career. I mean, the first thing I had an idea was perhaps you could play as a street urchin and you'd be stealing food to keep yourself alive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, so you could go down the thieving route. You could go down the thieving the, route. The thieving route. Uh, spies, for example. Spies, spies is a good one. We could make the ultimate. Stealth. But you could. But what we could do is we could do it. You. We're not a. Do you think it'd be interesting to make a complete non-combat game? So take. Take you remember the original Assassin's Creed, the trailing missions. Mm. I know everybody hated them, but do you think you could jazz that up enough for the entire game to be based around that? I think so. No killing involved. You just be following and getting information. You could do. You could do some sort of thieving thing where there's no combat. It's literally just um, you can you can you can have so you can say sort of like um, knock people out with with like maybe like a stun grenade or something like that. But there's no actual sort of hand to hand fighting or or shooting or anything like that. Mm. Um, what, you, what you could do, you could do this. I mean, I, I purely want to include the stealthing bit. Do you remember in um, the original Assassin's Creed where you'd have those, you, or the pickpocket, and um, you'd pickpocket someone when chasing them, and they'd do that single animation, which was they'd immediately touch their pocket and turn around and go, ah, and wave their hands around, and then just go, and back to normal with the rest of my day. I do remember that, yes. <laughs> I've been robbed for the tenth time today. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, back to it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's that weird guy in the hood who I keep seeing everywhere. <laughs> Who's um, been following me and pretending to blend in with a group of women. <laughs> the, the, only, the, only thing, the only thing I think may detract from taking the combat out is the fact that it's an action adventure. Action adventure usually has some, even if it's sort of quite light, some sort of element of combat in it. Um but it's, oh, well, the, 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 Maybe we try and just keep that as light spot. The adventure bit is... So you're a spy and you're enacting things. What would be quite cool, though, is say you're a spy and you're gathering information. And almost like in the way that in GTA uh, online at the moment, you, you gather information in order to complete heists. So, for example, obviously it's much more action-focused, that, but you have to do three things and then a heist just gets pulled off using the previous things, like, like you'll steal a car or et cetera, et cetera. Hmm. And then you have the car for the thing. What you could be doing is you could be setting up a big some sort of attack or some sort of raid or, I don't know, someone else doing an assassination attempt and you are get stealing all of the information and the success or the way that that final thing is carried out depends on what information you've gathered. So you might have this quite cool thing at the end where you're like, I really hope I've got enough information. You're watching the thing, you're watching the the raid come in real time and you're like, don't worry, guys, there's no anti-aircraft gun. Oh, there are anti-aircraft guns. Sorry, Mm -hmm. my bad. Maybe... Maybe we make so okay, 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 so maybe it's I, Maybelline. I like very good. Um, I like the I like the idea of doing a spy game. Okay, and I do. I am intrigued with the idea of making it very minimal combat. Maybe, maybe that you can, like I said, you can knock people out, but you can't get into full on fights because then that will blow your cover. Um, yes. So potentially we could, and you know how 
MI6 with James Bond and stuff is obviously very unrealistic, you know, because otherwise, if it were realistic, we'd hear about all these, you know, <laughs> this one lone man blowing up everything. What happened? Um, oh, we sent the man. He'll sort so, it out. What happened? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Something's going wrong. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. Send the man. But I, I can imagine what happens in, in real life is that you do have sort of, I think they're called intelligence officers, who um, who are on the ground who gather all the information and stuff. And then if something then has to happen, like an operation to, you know, you know, I don't know, like bust a drug ring or whatever, that all happens with other people. So other people will come in and do that from the information that this person has gathered. So yeah, maybe maybe we do a thing where you start off, maybe we could do an MI6 thing where you start off as, a, as like a basic low level, um, you know, intelligence officer fresh in and you go through a bit like in LA. Do we ever play LA Noir? Yeah, that's what the LA Noir was the kind of sort of. I wanted it to be a spy version of LA Noir. Yeah. On, on that, that's, a, little, that's a little side story that I want to I want to share. Not gaming, we're well, not gaming related. Related to this, I actually. Um, it's just the gaming blend. I know, of podcasts, I know. Because you're related to something that isn't gaming, but it's it's related to the story. So I, <laughs> essentially, a uh, someone I know who re- who passed away in the last few years. They were clearing out his stuff. And he um he used to be a spy for MI5, I believe. Yeah. And uh, what was quite hilarious is they were clearing out his stuff and they found all these massive cameras with huge lenses. <laughs> that doesn't sound particularly spooky. I know. We, had this, we were joking about the fact that, is that what's, what's wrong with that bush over there that's making those lens noises? Yes. <clears throat> why has that man got a big pervert camera? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's just, it just couldn't be like, say, like one of those old-fashioned ones where they hold up the gunpowder to make it make the flash happen. Yeah. <laughs> Could you just hold still for the next 10 minutes, please, while you're doing that secret information? Anyway, that's, that's my that, side. That's, that's an interesting thing, actually. Sorry, you've, 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 you've made me think. What if we make it non-modern we, we i was going back. to say well that was why i thought about it i was thinking sort of um cold cold war yes i like the idea mm. of um pushing it to the to, to the past mm, because then you could do you could do you could do you could do cold war setting where obviously you know a lot of the missions may be you know against the the soviets or whatever but i suppose the, the cold war you've got stuff going on in cuba you've got stuff going on in korea um you know you, so it gives you it gives you a chance to take your take that character to yeah, those different bit places. Yeah, a bit travel hopping, but, but that's where you get sort of James Bond-esque. And I think we should anti-James Bond it as much so your spy is staying at a youth hostel yeah. rather than a posh hotel. Yeah, and... and, and, and no, I, I ah, think, Mr. I think Bland, we've been expecting you. I think, I, think that, I think that would be really good. And I think how you how you perform in the missions, a bit like in LA, LA Noir will dictate, you know, Success, oh, yeah, yeah, success. It's which to, is which is why I quite like the idea of you being able to see that the what you the intelligence you gave get carried out in real time. You're always there prepping for something, whether it yeah. be a raid, it could be an airstrike, it could be an assassination attempt, where, and you just get to watch it all. And you you can watch all the information you gave either completely fluff up the thing, yeah, because it might be the information you give them gets them all killed. Um, you know, whatever wet work team ends up going in and might all get killed because of wrong information that you supplied mm. and then so and i think you could you could also procedurally generate this to a certain extent yeah no, because because all you need is a target well not necessarily a target but all you need is a, an objective a map to a map with lots of elements in and those elements can be plugged in taken away at, at will um one thing we haven't really paid bear in mind though is the career side of it so are we saying that your spy as he gets more successful whatever it is, so that as those raids that he employs gets more successful and the way they judge success can be if it's a raid, then if the raid results in lots of men dying, that's not a very successful raid and you don't get many career points or if it's very clear, no one dies and it's well set up by you, then you get lots of points. How do you advance though as as a spy? So I think what we what we could do is we could make... It sounded like you so dropped that... a pen in rage there on your side. <laughs> How dare you suggest that? No, as we've discussed many times, my chair is incredibly squeaky. And unfortunately, I moved a centimetre to the left and my chair <laughs> went... No, I'll kill the chair. Um, um, I, I didn't get a new chair. Um, I think so you, could, you could do it one of two ways. I think you could either do it so that you... Um, a bit like in an RPG where you get you get better skills and, and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and, you know, you can move more silently or whatever, and, you know, whatever it is that allows you to um, get better at gathering this information. Um, you can have skill trees and all that sort of stuff. Or you could do an actual, like, job progression thing, like in real life, where you start <laughs> off as... No, no, I'm being serious. <laughs> I'm being serious. You start off as, like, a as like a, a basic agent. Yeah. And you work your way up to running, you know, 
a department that works out of some city and you could and you and you have spies on your books. You still I thought you were gonna say works stuff. out of Somerset. No. <laughs> No, uh, not Somerset, but not that big sort of spying metropolis that is Somerset. No, yeah. but what I mean to say, say, for example, you could a bit like in. Um, have you seen Jack Ryan? Uh, I am. I'm aware of Jack Ryan. So, so in, so in Jack Ryan, one of the characters goes off to be like the the head of like the Moscow um, bureau, or whatever, um, or the Moscow office, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then has, and then of course he controls all the work of the spies in that office. They still does spy stuff themselves, but you know, a bit more of a boss if that makes sense. So you could do that as well, and you end up having a bit more of a. Uh, you could you could use it to progress the story in that at the at the, at the start when you're an intelligence officer really low down, you have a very small picture of what's going on, and the wider story is then. In, you know, you gain a more perspective over the story. Yeah, I really like. I really like that. Yeah, I really like linking the the career to the story. So what you could do is you could have these sort of early missions. A lot of them being procedurally generated, as you are the main spy in action. And then what it kind of does is, it as you go up and you get these sort of points system, you could have a point system or you could have a promotion based system. Either way, as you, you carry out these missions successfully, you start to get funneled into a more linear like five specific missions that give away mm. the plot and that can be linked to like now you are of senior level now you've been promoted enough we can start explaining what we were telling you to do and why we were trying to weaken weaken this island sorry pardon me i've got a bit spluttery towards the end got very emotional but <laughs> very emotional about that story but that that allows us to have both have our cake and eat it with a big expansive re- lots of replayability that start bit and then those last few missions you can really drive home the narrative and it can and yeah. as you say it can link to it yeah, exactly. And I think, I think, I think, because I think that's very L.A. Noire, and I think a lot of people like that part of L.A. Noire. Where... Less, less the driving at the speed limit part. Oh, the driving. <laughs> um, that was dreadful. Um, but yeah, but I think I, that's one of the things I really liked about it. I, I really liked that you start off as like a like a like a really basic Bobby. You do really well, and then suddenly you're a traffic cop, um, and then you do traffic cop missions, and then you do really well, and then suddenly you're a vice cop, and all. And like, I think I think that sort of thing in a sort of spy sense, would work quite well. It would. Um, we'd, we'd have to make sure that there was enough action for it still to be counted as an action adventure. Yeah, I think I think in that case, I mean, you could have combat, but really, really sort of basic. I think you, I think you just got stealth, stealth combat in terms of, as you said earlier, you can knock someone out, but the moment you get into head-to-head, you you, you will get minced by bullets. And we could saying, all, you could almost... you can you can assassinate people? <laughs> no. No With, assassinate. Okay. No assassinate. Yeah. You can so, just bonk someone on the head. Um, literally, you could say you don't carry weapons. You just and you, the only way you can upgrade it is maybe tasers or something like that. But you bonk someone on the head, uh, then they get knocked out for X amount of time. They don't actually die. And also, we could even if we're, we're feeling cruel, or this could be a difficulty setting. It, there's an Operation Flashpoint esque. Um, if you shoot, you will bleed out and die. If you get shot, sorry. Right. Okay. No. That makes, are we doing the whole Metal Gear Solid thing where you knock people out and then put them in lockers and stuff so that they, <laughs> they don't get found? Yeah. Well. Yeah. You can. Yeah. You can do that. I mean, that, that the Hitman esque. Put put them in a basket. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can. You you could do that, but I think that the objective will be if you are getting to the stage where you're having to bonk someone out, then sounds a bit rude. That. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, then, then, then yeah. something's something's gone wrong. Okay, I think we've got the rough gauge there. Mm. So the career, as you work yourself up, you go to you, you then enter these sort of more narrative focused missions. You still are the person on the ground, though, importantly, but you have security clearance to find out the missions, and that's where the career is linked. So you have that, you have that first element where you can do, have a little bit of RPG upgrades, etc., and then you get pushed into the more linear narrative once you come far enough in your career. Great, we got it. Now mm. is the time as I whack my knuckles on my table, mm. now is the time we, we go for narrative. So yes. you've got to pick a generic plot, Scott. We have a list of wonderful generic plots, 1 to 19, and Scott will pick a plot and we will crowbar it into this yes. narrative. So 1 to 19, Scott, do you, do you, do you fancy a little, a little swing? Uh, I'm going to go for number nine, the same as the genre. Number nine is the underdog story. Okay. Underdog, so... Everyone roots for the underdog. This is the plot where the underprivileged, brackets, handicapped, poor, etc. This is not word words, by the way. <laughs> Triumphs despite overwhelming odds. So you're a spy for the Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, we could 
we could pull it out. I mean, obviously, we we think MI six because we're British, but you know, we could we could pull it out and we could think of quite a quite a small country that is an underdog. Yeah. Well, do you, do you know of any countries during the Cold War that worked on the side of were essentially a bit of a uh, um, sort of ruled over by their allies? Mm, and there's a lot of there's a lot of sort of NATO countries that would fit that bill, but. Because I'm wondering if you were a smaller country and say you were being pressured to do mm. something and as the narrative sort of develops, you kind of realise that you're being pressured and your your character says, no, we're going to take this into our own hands. Let's strike back against the people who are, against the countries that are press, oppressing us. Yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to think actually, that's, that's quite a difficult one. Well, um, we don't, we don't have to be a cold war. We could be sort of imaginary, imaginary war for the moment. But I like the idea of you essentially being a spy that's been like for a small country that's being um, forced by a bigger brother essentially to you better you better spy on our enemies for us and then as the story develops you go well no we don't need to we can we can fight back we can declare our own independence etc cetera, etc cetera. hmm interesting um yeah there's not really anything that fits that sort of idea historically that i can think of off the top of my head um unless Ooh, you could do, um, yeah, okay. So you could do maybe the North Vietnamese potentially during the Vietnam War, potentially. Ooh, um, wow. What because, were they? Yeah, explain away. So I don't know the, much about it. So they so they they started off in with quite close ties to the Russians, right? Um, because obviously the you know it's a communist um communist uh, fueled war or the you know from the American side of the war against communism. Yeah, but then as the war went on, they started. They sort of broke away from Russian influence and started leaning heavily on the Chinese. And then that put the Chinese and the Russians at loggerheads. So you could have. That's could a really have, interesting story. I mean, correct us in comments or reviews if we're wrong about this. But that yes, sounds I, like I a really interesting. I think that's what happened. Um, and so I think that would be quite an interesting one because then you've got very you've got two large powers fighting over your small country. Um, I really like and all, that, and, all, and and you know, the North Vietnamese thing is quite an interesting. You know, there's 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 a lot of human stories you can talk about with obviously you know, you know like the, um, you know the, the the brutality of the Vietnam War. So like, I think you could do some quite evocative stuff with that. Um, I hundred percent agree. I think that's a really cool idea. And your your man. I mean, I don't know. We don't know. Just just putting our hands up for both of us. We don't know enough historical figures to base this on mm. a real person. So mm. if there is a real person for this. Let us know because what I what I understand is our man slash woman could be the person that sort of starts to push the team. <coughs> pardon me, away from um, away from the Russians and towards Chinese, and that could be mm. a really interesting spy story. Mm. Yeah, no, I think I think yeah, and I think you and you could do it so it covered the whole. You know, that the, the Vietnam War was really long, so you could you could you could do it so that it it sort of jumps into you know different parts of it and sees it all the way through to the end, um, which would be interesting. Um, yes, I think, and not something that people usually do video games on. I don't think they know more. Well, no, when when they do it, it's from a from a certain angle to do it oh, from yes. within. Yes, oh, yeah, definitely. US. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, no, I th- I think that works. With the- do, do we want a personal narrative to be thrown in there? Um, I don't see any reason why not. I mean, I think you you could have two narratives running, which is the personal narrative and the. The, the sort of wider geopolitical narrative and how you fit into that. Um, I don't think I, I, yeah, you I think do both. Your bloke is very much an underdog. You could do him from a, a Vietnamese village, a small area, and within his security forces, he's seen as a a grunt to go and get things done. But as mm. you progress through the career, I mean, you could do a really nice thing with audio if we're doing this career thing at the start. So if there's going to be a period right at the start where you're working on a procedurally generated map, for and performing certain um, mixed uh, objectives, you could have mm. a really nice thing where you have people talking to you over comms, and they change the way they're talking to you as you go up through the ranks. So at the start, they're quite dismissive to you. They say, "Just get this job done," and then as you go up through the ranks, they're more respectful. Then the audio changes towards you, and that they they clearly respect you more as a as a soldier, not soldier, as a spy. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting things you can do as well because. It works quite well with stealth being setting it as a North Vietnamese thing because if you think about um, in the Vietnam War they had a lot of um, in the so when they were fighting in the jungles 
the North Vietnamese dug loads of ratways underneath the oh, underneath okay. the jungle so they could ambush um, the Americans and the South Vietnamese. Um, so you you know you, you can use those to like you know infiltrate you know um, American camps and all that sort of stuff and um, you know maybe you could do some sort of dead drop system where you know if you you know when you start off really low down you maybe don't have a radio so you rely on dead drop instructions and all this sort of stuff. What, what's um, dead drop? Explain that. Oh, sorry. So, so dead drop is where, um, you know, a, an agent's handler will come along, um, drop instructions at a designated place. And then at a designated time, you'll go along, the agent will go along and, and, and pick them up. So there's no, there's no sort of the, the agent and the handler never meet. That makes uh, sense. Okay. I, I really um, like, I really like the idea of, um, as well, of, if you do that, of rather someone going on the radio and saying, you've got to kill this person. I kind of like the idea that every time you get dropped into a map, you have t- 15, 20 minutes without an objective mm, you where you can you just explore and go, right, that's over there, that's over there, and you can go around. Like, you know on um, Elden Ring, um, mm. have you heard of that small game that came out recently? Yes. Yes, no, I have. <laughs> there's a, the, the open world is just a map, and there's yeah. no there's no um, markers on it at all. It's not like Ubisoft where it's markered. So I like the idea of maybe you going around, you're going, okay, well, that's that, and you can almost fill in your map in that first yeah. 15, 20 minutes. And once you've yeah. filled it in, then you get the dead drop and you're like, oh, great. Okay. Now I know where everybody is. Mm. Yeah. Well, you don't have to do that. And you can just have a wander around and you could challenge yourself to get the dead drop and start from fresh. And there might be certain situations in which the security in the area means you can't do a full explore and then you get dead drop and then you have to yeah, and it goes, work it out as you go. It says explore entire map. Oh, like, God damn it. Um, oh, I, I like, I, I, I like I, that. I think, no, I think this worked quite well. Let me go. Let me go over this. So we've got an action adventure. With a, a career and stealth, what we decided to do is we decided to do a spy game, and which ultimately fulfills the adventure part. And the action will be there a small amount of um, stealth action in terms of bonking people on the head, basically um, bonking people on the head, not, bonking, not, not hitting them, bonking. bonking them on the head. I cannot be clearer about this. Bonking mm. people on the head, um, mm. and, and the way that the, what we've decided to do is the career mode. You get put on kind of a, a couple of procedurally generated maps, and as you sort of complete objectives, you get to see the final result. So you you get all the information for a raid and then you get to see the raid actually happening in real time. And depending on how much information you've successfully gathered and if your information is correct, the uh, raid, the assassination, whatever it is, will come or go off successfully and you'll get career points. As you get those career points on those doing those procedurally generated missions, you'll start to get funneled into the main plot as you get promoted through the spy agency that you're working for. And that plot is you're essentially um, a North Vietnamese um, spy and you slowly start to move away from working with the Russians. Um, And (laughs) that's as far as I'm going because I don't know anything else about that. But that is the essential (laughs) plot. And you're an underdog as well. You're not expected to to achieve much within your village. That's our narrative as the underdog. But within your village, within your agency, and you eventually get to the rise to the top and people start treating you better and better. And you have all this wonderful spy stuff we've invented, like exploring the map, filling it out for yourself. So it's kind of a hitman game without the actual assassinations and with all the information and following people about, which I think is cool and I think is niche. And you know what, Scott? I think we should name the thing. Go. Uh, while you were having your 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 chat to yourself... Um, I was I'm thinking about it. And the listeners, <laughs> I, I came up with absolutely nothing. Um, so you know, you could you could link you could have a vi- you could link it to Vietnam and have some sort of like. Um, uh, but then I, I, I couldn't really think of anything that I couldn't really think of anything that would work. Um, you could call it so you know. Uh, there's there's a communist theme to it in terms of you know your your sort of political leanings. You could call it Red Sun, as in not sun as in the sun, as in you are a sun. How about Red Spy? Red Spy could work. Red, red sp- Agent. Red Agent. I like Red Agent. Um, Sounds like a spin-off of Red Faction. It really does, yeah. Um, red Agent could work. I like Red Agent. Red um, Agent. We're not. We're not. We're not coloning. We're not coloning this one, as the doctor said to his patient. When we do Red Agent, it's nice and simple. I like Red Agent. So this game is going to be called Red Agent, and it's going to be coming to a. Tablet near you. No, it's going to be. No, <laughs> it'll, no. Be, it'll be coming. It'll be coming to a console near you if mm. Sony or Microsoft ever pull their fingers out and get in touch with us. What mm. are they playing at? I know. It's. I, I'm. I'm waiting with bated breath. I'm waiting with bait. That's, that's concerning. <laughs> um. Anyway, that has been the Gaming Blender podcast. I think you all agree it was stealthy as anything. Mm. Very stealthy. 
Anyway, we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for listening to the end. Uh, if you have listened to the end, please could you drop us a review and uh, like the well, like like us on Facebook, I was about to say, but I mean like us on Twitter. I managed to get confused there and get confused with my own words. Find us on Twitter. Suggest some stuff if you want us to challenge us to come up with our own games um, to really challenge you, then that made no sense at all, did it, Scott? It didn't, no. <laughs> Would you like to try that again? Let's, let's try the whole thing again. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to The Gaming Blender. I've been... I said I've been Scott. What am I doing? <laughs> Are you okay? I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, I'll, never... I'll, I'll, I'll close it out. Do you want to do the close out? I, I... I've been Scott. And I've been Matt. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, leave a review and find us on uh, Twitter. Thank you so much. Keep yes. blending. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I am so tired. <laughs> 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 <laughs>